right? Okay. So let's just take some time to pray before we start, right? Um, and as we pray, um, let's pray in the spirit, which is praying in the Holy Ghost, which is praying in tongues, right? So um, let's take some time to pray. You know, those of us who can pray in tongues, pray in the spirit, um, just want to encourage us to just go ahead and start praying in tongues, praying in the spirit. You know, the Bible declares that um, that when we pray in the spirit, that we are being edified, we are being strengthened, right? Um, there is a strength, spiritual strength coming in as we pray in the spirit. So let's let's begin to pray in the spirit. Okay, um, maybe we can all stand. Um, those of us who are here, why don't we all stand up? Okay, and just begin to pray in the spirit. Um, pray loud enough so that you can hear, right? You yourself can hear, and um, just begin to pray. Right? Let's let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, we just commit this time into your mighty hands, Lord. And yes, Lord. And the Bible says that uh, the spirit man is being edified. You know, we receive revelation, the mysteries of God in our spirit as we pray in tongues. And the Bible also declares that uh, sometimes we don't know what we should pray for as we ought. Right? We see that in uh, Romans chapter 8. But the Holy Spirit makes intercessions for us. Right? The Holy Spirit himself, he makes intercession for us in, uh, in groanings. Right? Okay. So let's, let's begin to just pray. Let's continue to pray. And as we're praying, let's expect, you know, the, um, the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Let's expect strength to come into our spirit, soul, and body. Let's expect refreshing. Let, let's expect renewal. Now let's expect answers as we pray. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name, God. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Yes, Father God, we thank you for the rest. We thank you for the refreshing, God. We thank you for the strength. Thank you for the renewing. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that you are with us. Thank you, Lord, for enabling us, Lord, uh, to, and uh, Lord, praying in and through us, Lord. We thank you for the gift of uh, praying in tongues. And Lord, we thank you. What a privilege it is to be in your presence, Lord. Uh, Father God, we thank you for the refreshing that has come upon us, that is that is coming upon us, Lord. We thank you for the strength, Lord. We thank you for the edification, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the clarity, Lord, in our thoughts, in our minds, Father God. Even as we pray in the Spirit, Lord, we thank you. We give you all the praise, all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Um, those of us who are standing. Um, just want to encourage us for those of us who, uh, you know, who who can pray in the spirit, can pray in tongues, um, to continue to pray, right? To continue to pray in tongues, to to pray extended hours, maybe uh, extended times praying in the spirit, right? So it's for our good, uh, and He has given us it as a the God has given this as a gift for our good, for our benefit, right? And as we pray, we will realize. We will, uh, we will, uh, you know, realize or we will feel the refreshing and the strength coming into our hearts, right? So let's not neglect the gift, but let's uh, move in it, 
right? More and more. Okay. So um, today, today's class, let's continue from where we stopped last class. Um, so from last class, what is it that you personally understood? Okay, what is it that you personally, one thing that you understood, one thing that you learned? Anyone? Uh, you know, uh, online class also. What is that one thing that you learned, one thing that you understood? You can put it on the chat. Okay. What is, maybe just one thing. Yeah, you can put your hand up and then you can, yeah, yeah. What is that? No, last class. Last class. That was the first class no? about Trinity. Last class, any one thing that you uh, remember? Just one thing. Um, anyone? We spent two hours last class. Yeah. You, you can sit and. Yeah. Okay. So, what is what did you understand from that? See, we, we learned that the Holy Spirit was with the Old Testament people, prophets, you know, uh, of the Old Testament people of God. Holy Spirit always works. Mm. Okay. He works among people, upon people. Anyone else? Whenever there is some need, okay? Mm. Mm. Yeah, whenever there was a need or whenever there was an assignment that God had for the people, that the Holy Spirit, you know, He would come and He would enable them to fulfill that. Right? That is something that we saw. And like you said, yes, visions and uh, dreams and all that you know the, the lord would speak yeah okay i see here the holy spirit is a person is something okay that we learned um what is that uh esther no pride okay can you just explain that uh, i sorry i didn't understand okay then with one more um thought here is that god is omnipotent omnipresent omniscient okay that is something that we learned um, I think in the first class, uh, Lucy, Daniel, Holy Spirit intervenes us in prayer. Okay. 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 That's a bit general, but in the Old Testament, what did we learn? What did we understand? Anyone else? Shireen, anything that you learned last class? Nonsense. Okay. Okay. Just want to encourage us to okay, Gertrude. Um, the Holy Spirit inspired, yeah, the people, the artisans, right, to build and specific skills, um, especially in the cutting of jewels and you know uh, craftsmanship, workmanship. The Holy Spirit gave, right, and we looked at the person Bezalel. Uh, who, who's mentioned in the book of Exodus, and we see that he was empowered by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so Esther is saying pride is totally unacceptable. Remember, as take, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, now I don't know in what context we looked at that uh, about pride. Okay, um, Holy Spirit worked in the lives of Moses, Joshua. Yeah. If you can be a little more specific in what ways um, did he work that you understood, um, that will be great as well. OK, so today also we would, uh, you know, we'd look at a few more, you know, few more ways um, in which the Holy Spirit worked. See, we saw that Holy Spirit as creator. We saw Holy Spirit as the creative God. We, we saw Holy Spirit as the empowerer, right, enabling them to do certain things which they could not do, you know, in the natural. Like, for example, we saw that, um, you know, uh, about Elijah or Elisha, not, uh, I think it was about Elisha, right? Um, where 
the the this this person has this conversation and he's saying you know Elijah is giving this instruction go tell the king go tell the king that uh, you met with me and then he says you know how will it be you know if i go and if i go tell him that i saw you but the, the spirit of god will take you to another place right so we we saw that that uh, uh, supernaturally that people could be transported right and that is something that we see in the book of acts also that the spirit of god would do that right something supernatural something miraculous okay um and we, then the last uh, the last thing that we saw was uh, about uh, how the holy spirit gave the blueprint right that's something that we saw how the gave, what blueprint of what the design for the temple the entire uh, design in terms of you know how should be the dimensions be uh, what should go where the entire dimensions for the temple measurements the design was given to david right and david was able to pass that on to solomon okay so the spirit of god actually did that right okay so today let's look at a few more things um how the spirit of god um, came upon certain people and they were led to prophesy um, we are going to look at uh, second chronicles chapter 15 okay um, so keep your bibles handy we're going to look at a few more scriptures okay uh, second chronicles chapter 15 okay uh, and um, we we are reading uh, verse 1 onwards it says now the spirit of god came upon azariah okay now the spirit of god came upon azariah the son of oded and he went out to meet Asa and said to him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin, the Lord is with you while you are with him. So he goes there and gives a message from God's heart. Okay. So what happens? Second Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 1. Second Chronicles, Old Testament. Old Testament, Second Chronicles, chapter 15. Verse 1. Okay, so this is what happens. The Spirit of God came upon this person, Azariah, and he was moved to share. Okay. Um, did you do you remember what happened to King Saul when the Spirit of God came upon him? What did he do? He okay, he prophesied, right? Was he a prophet? No, but the Spirit of God came upon him and he prophesied. Right, that is what we uh, that is what we learn, right? Okay, so um, okay, yeah, you just put thank you, Cyril. Right, uh, and those of you who have the notes, you can just follow through in the notes. We are, you know, the scripture reference is there as well. Okay, okay. so and so on. We see that the spirit of God came upon Jehaziel. Now, this is uh, uh, something that we see. We we move on to chapter twenty. Same Second Chronicles chapter twenty. Now this is about King Jehoshaphat, right? and we know that. Uh, I don't know if you remember that story or what happened there. He, the kings are attacking, and so he does something. He does something very radical. He places or puts the worship team in front of the people who are worshiping, who are worshippers, who are singing, the musicians, he puts them in front of the army. Okay, But this is before that happens. Okay, This is what happened. Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 14 says, Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel. Okay. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel. And then he goes, and verse 15, And he said, Listen, all of, all you of Judah and you inhabitants, thus says the Lord God to you. Okay, so what is he doing? The Spirit of the Lord comes upon Jehaziel, and so it, he says, it's, it's mentioned here, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, verse 14, right? Verse 15, and he said, listen all of you Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid, nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Okay. So what, in other words, um, 
yeah thank you thank you Cyril page 10 right in the notes thank you um, so in other words what did Jehaziel do when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him okay that's a question right the Spirit of the Lord came upon him we see that in verse 14 and verse 15 he does something so what does he do he says something what does he do he's again prophesying right he's speaking the heart and mind of God what God wants him to convey or speak he is speaking he's speaking to the people and to the king right this is what he says thus says the Lord God to you and he says do not be afraid uh, just this Lord God to you um, uh, and then he says do not be afraid not dismayed because the battle is the Lord's and uh, it's it's it, don't be afraid of the multitude and so on okay um, just one second sorry um, okay so we see that that's a frequent occurrence okay spirit of the lord comes upon the people and they did something or they spoke something there and they moved you know in ways that it was not humanly possible right here comes a message and this message what kind of a message is it what kind of a prophecy if you read verse 15 what is it read verse 15 huh anyone yeah yeah so Mm. Okay, so he's saying, don't be afraid, don't be dismayed. So it's a comforting message, right? It's a comforting message, and also it's a message which is, uh, which is, which is, uh, we would say prophetic because it's foretelling what is actually going to happen. That right? is foretelling, saying this battle is the Lord's, which means the outcome of this battle belongs to God. Okay, it's a very comforting message. So that's what, what comes. The Spirit of the Lord comes upon him and he shares, he speaks a comforting message. And he, it's also a message which foretells or tells in advance how the end will be. Yeah. So he says, this battle is the Lord's. Okay. Um, so we see similar patterns in several other books as well. In Nehemiah, and Nehemiah testifies about how, and when he's talking, he's talking about the Israelites um, and how the Spirit of God instructed them. In Job, we see, in the Psalms also, we see several references about the Holy Spirit. Okay? So the, for us to, you can go through the notes, you can refer to these scriptures, right? For us to understand that the works of the Holy Spirit is not just in the book of Acts, but we see right through the Old Testament. Right through the Old Testament. Okay, And we see... A difference, of course, we're going to talk about the difference, but we see when the Holy Spirit came upon people, He enabled them, He caused them to do various things. Prophesying was one of them. He gave them abilities, He gave them physical abilities, He gave them design, creativity, um, and so many other things. He caused people, you know, we read that, right? He gathered the people under leader, under David. Right. He gathered them, brought them together. Okay. So, so many other things. He gave them um, the ability for leadership. Right. So Moses laid hands on Joshua, and the Spirit of God came upon Joshua, and so that jo Joshua could lead the people just like Moses did. So, leadership, ability. What else did we see? Interpretation of dreams. Right. We saw that. No, nobody else could, you know, first of all, we learned that the Holy Spirit, God, He's the one who was conveying or communicating a message through dreams, right? He was giving the Pharaoh a dream, and He gave the interpretation of that to, um, you know, to Joseph. Uh, what is the meaning of the dream? What we should do? You know, all that He gave to Joseph. So we see that the Holy Spirit 
moves uh, or ministered in so many ways, right? He spoke, so we understand he corrected uh, through Nath, Prophet Nathan. He brought a message of correction to, um, to David, right? Okay, let's uh, move on. I just want us to move on to Ezekiel, okay? If you look at Ezekiel, we see a very unusual way uh, in which Ezekiel describes how the Holy Spirit dealt with him or the, how the Holy Spirit interacted with him okay? in a very physical manner. Okay, let's go to um, Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 2. Okay, Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 2. Then the Spirit entered me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet and I heard him who spoke to me. Okay, so the prophet Ezekiel is writing about how the Holy Spirit interacted with him, okay, or dealt with him. He says, the Spirit of God entered me and he set me on my feet. What does that mean? Which means that he literally, the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, lifted him up and caused him to stand up straight on his legs. Okay, so he lifted him up, entered him and did something physical with him. You know? So sometimes we think, oh, God will not do that. Well, God did, right? He, he lifted, literally lifted the prophet physically and, uh, and made him stand on his feet. Okay, if you look at chapter 3 and verse 12, we see a similar thing. Then the spirit lifted me up and I heard behind me a great thunderous voice Blessed is the glory of the Lord from his place. So the Spirit of God lifted him up physically, right? Again in verse 14, so the Spirit lifted me up and took me away. Okay, so we see the Holy Spirit lifted him up and, it, and he, Ezekiel testifies and he says, the Holy Spirit took me away. Okay, verse 14, took me away and I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit, but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me okay so that's another usage that we see in the old testament the hand of the lord came upon me okay which refers to the presence of god which refers to the presence of the holy spirit and the work of the holy spirit in a person okay we'll see that you know you'll see this over and over again the hand of the lord came upon him okay what does that mean that means that it's as if, you know, you put a hand on someone, that person can actually feel your hand, right? The hand of the Lord came upon Ezekiel. He says, the hand of the Lord was strong upon me, which means he felt the presence of the Lord. He felt the presence of the Holy Spirit. So he says, Holy Spirit lifted me up and he took me away. Okay, So he did, he did this. And several other references that we see in Ezekiel, uh, you know, similar to this, right? Um, let's look at uh, chapter 8, verses 1 to 3. Okay. Um, and so, he, you know, verse 3, he stretched out the form of a hand and took me by a lock of my hair, and the Spirit lifted me up between heaven and earth and brought me in visions of God to Jerusalem, to the front, uh, sorry, to the door of the north gate of the inner court, etc. So here he's having a supernatural encounter with God. This is what is happening. Right? So he's again lifted up. He's brought in vision. So the Spirit of God is communicating or conveying something to him, Okay, a message, and it, it's in the form of visions. Okay, what is a vision? What is a vision? Anyone? And you say, you know, vision. What is a vision? What does that mean? We we said we 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 read Joel twenty two twenty eight, right? Where the Holy Spirit uh, uh, pour out of His Spirit, and then the Bible talks about how young men will dream dreams and, and see visions and so on. Right. So, what is the vision? Anyone? Ah. Uh. Mm. Okay, something that is visible, something 
visual, right? Something that you see, uh, it could be, um, you know, something like a picture, or it is something like a video, a vision, right? Okay, revelation about future, uh, visible in a vision, right? Thank you, Esther. Okay, it could be about anything. It could be about past, present, future, right? But it's something that um, that the Lord is conveying in the form of a picture or in the form of a moving picture, which is like a video. So he says here, Ezekiel says, the Lord, Spirit of God, took me, okay? He lifted me up and he took me in visions, which means that he was literally taken to this place in Jerusalem, but it was in the vision. No, it was not uh, something that, it, it, it was not there physically, but something that happened to him in visions. Okay, so we see all this happening. We see similar things in Daniel and so on. Okay, so for us, uh, it's it's important for us to understand that the Holy Spirit moves right through Scripture. We see the Holy Spirit working powerfully right through the Old Testament. Right, for us to understand that's not just one way in which God the Holy Spirit works, but in in diverse ways, in different ways, right? More than what we can even imagine, right? Or fathom, right? In all these ways, God the Holy Spirit works. Okay, and we are studying because we are talking about the person of the Holy Spirit, the person and power of the Holy Spirit. We need to understand, right? In the Old Testament, there is mention of the Holy Spirit. It is, it is, it is right through the Old Testament, and these are the ways in which He worked. And when He came upon people, you know, that's the frequent occurrence that we see. He came upon people and pe and caused people to do certain things, to say certain things. Okay, and that's all for his purpose. Okay, let's move on to chapter four. Okay, what page number is chapter four, please? Um, so I can just tell the chapter four. Uh, you have your notes. Okay, uh, what page number is it? Um, sorry? 30? One, three. Okay, that's page number 13. Online students, if any of you want. Uh, okay, I, th I think I saw someone put up their hands. Oh, no, sir. I thought it was on. Is it number four? Work of the Holy Spirit in the life of Jesus. Is that page twelve? Uh, I'm sorry, Shani. Uh, it's I'm it's sorry. not very clear now. Sorry. Um, if possible, can you put it on the chat? Um, it's echoing a bit here. If possible, and I can just respond to that. Sorry about that. Um, in page number 12. Okay, sorry. I think Shekhar has put it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for thank you for that. Okay. It's just that I'm just following it on my phone, and I, it's the one continuous script without page numbers. So, okay. Okay, so let's move on to chapter 4, right? Okay, chapter 4, we're going to look, study about the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the Lord Jesus. Okay? Now we looked at Old Testament. Now we're looking at you know the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of Jesus. In particular, we're going to look at what the Holy Spirit did in the New Testament just before Jesus arrived. Okay, just before Jesus came on the scene, we see something um, that the Holy Spirit doing. Okay, so let's move on to Luke chapter one. Okay, Luke chapter one and verse fifteen. Okay, so it's very interesting to see that. You know, hey, this is something that we are seeing right through Scripture, and this is something that we see that the work of the Holy Spirit, even before the um, the, the Lord came on, you know, in uh, uh, in the form of man. So, uh, Luke chapter one, verse fifteen. What does it say? Fifteen. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. Okay, who's he referring to? Okay, let's read the verse, and then we'll find out. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. So who is this talking about? Who is this he? John the Baptist, right? John the Baptist. It says that John the Baptist will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, So John the Baptist will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Something unusual, right? 
So, but the Lord decided to do that, that he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. This was his assignment. This was his ministry. He's going to, right from a young age, he's going to be, you know, he's going to be set apart for this. And he was instrumental in bringing many people, or turning many people to the Lord. Right? He was, we know that he was also the one who prepared the way. He was called the forerunner. He prepared the way for the Lord Jesus. And what else did he do? He actually introduced right, he, he, Lord Jesus to the people. He said, in what way did he introduce? He said, you know, there is one who is coming after me, who, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. Right? We saw that in Matthew. We're going to look at a few verses also. So he introduced the Lord Jesus. But we see that the, he, the Holy Spirit, was upon him or in him uh, even before, even when he was in his mother's womb. Okay, then the second one, we go to verse 35, same chapter, verse 35. The angel answered and said to her, so who's it referring to? The angel is talking to, speaking to Mary, right? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also, the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. So, so what is what is this uh, referring to? What is God? What is this prophecy, or what is this message that Mary is receiving from the angel? It's about. Sorry. About the promise, about birth, about the birth of the Lord Jesus. Okay, about the nature of the birth of the Lord Jesus. Okay, so so the Holy Spirit is doing something miraculous here. Okay, so um, so the reason is this because um, if you look at verse thirty-four, Mary asks the angel or tells the angel or questions the angel and says, "How can this be?" You know, you're saying that I will give birth to a son, but how can this be? Because I I'm not married yet. Okay, very valid question. And then in verse 35, the angel answered, "The Holy Spirit will do this miraculous work. Okay, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you know the the similar way in which the Holy Spirit came upon the people of God in the Old Testament." Okay. We, we read the same thing. The Holy Spirit came upon these prophets, came upon these people, and they did, they said, they conveyed. Okay. Same thing. The, the angel is saying, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest, meaning the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God will actually do this. This is how it will be. It will be a miraculous birth. It will be a virgin birth. But... It is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so no human involved in this, right? So it says the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Okay, so we see this happening. Matthew chapter uh, 1, verse 18, I think we see a similar thing. Uh, the same thing recorded for us there. Uh, Matthew 1, 18. Um, okay, so this is um, uh, with regard to Joseph, right? Let's read that. Matthew 1, 18. Now the birth of Jesus was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So exactly like how the angel told Mary, it was so. Verse 20. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth the Son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Okay, so so something very wonderful, something miraculous, at the same time, something very disturbing. Very disturbing for both Joseph and for Mary. Okay, so 
this is the work of the Holy Spirit. This is the work of God. This is a supernatural work, not possible by man. But at the same time, it was something which was very deeply disturbing for Joseph and for Mary. Right? So in fact, for Mary, she was like, you know, how can I be, how can I become a mother? I'm not married. I'm betrothed, engaged, but I'm not married yet. And the same thing, the angel of the Lord comes and Joseph has a dream. And in the dream is a message saying, um, you know, this is what will happen. And Joseph, he actually was, he was troubled. But he was, he was a just man, says. He was just and fair. So he said, okay, let me just not make it a big issue. Mary is carrying a child. Now she's engaged to me. I'm not married to her yet. So let me... Let me not make a big noise. Let me just you know, be quiet about it and not get married to her. Okay, So that, is, that was his thought. We see in verse 19. Okay, While he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. He thought about this and he was he, probably he just went to bed troubled. He's thinking about these things. I'm just going to avoid Mary. I'm just going to you know, go away maybe somewhere and, and not get married to her. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and conveys the same message that uh, this what was told to Mary, saying, that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Meaning, the Holy Spirit has done this work. It's a supernatural work. It's a miraculous work. Okay, so you can go ahead and get married. Don't worry about it. You know, it's saying the Son of God is going to be born in this manner. And in fact, he gives the name, right? And you shall call his name. Jesus. Okay, he's a, so the angel is giving that name also in his conversation with uh, Joseph. Okay, So this is again work of the Holy Spirit, the birth of the Lord and how he is uh, you know, con uh, confirmed to both Mary and to um, uh, Joseph. Right? Okay, let's look at um, verse 41 in the book of Luke chapter 1. Okay, chapter 1, verse 41. Okay. Now, what has happened now? Mary is with child. Now she goes to meet her cousin, who is Elizabeth. Right? She goes to meet her cousin, who is Elizabeth. Now Elizabeth and, and her husband, Zechariah, they have been childless for many years. Okay? And uh, we see that Zechariah also has a supernatural encounter like while he's serving he's a priest he's serving in the temple and he has a supernatural encounter the angel of the lord says that your wife will bear a child okay and this is and says so many things about john the baptist now now that is what has happened now elizabeth is mary's cousin okay so he go, she goes and meets mary okay let's read from verse 39 okay luke chapter 1 Verse 39 says, Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. Okay, now read carefully verse 41. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. So Mary goes and says, hello, Elizabeth. And there's something that happens to Elizabeth. The baby moves in Elizabeth's you know, womb. And Elizabeth is filled with the Holy Spirit. And she goes on to say something. Right Now, we, we must understand that this is before the days of cell phone, before the days of email, before the days of you know, any such message being passed. Right? And the verses prior to that, we see that Mary has this encounter, angelic encounter. And then on, she says, okay, fine, be it unto me according to your word. And then she goes to meet Elizabeth. Okay, When she meets Elizabeth, this is what happens. Now, look at verse 42. Then she spoke out with a loud voice. Who spoke out? Elizabeth. And said, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me. For as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the 
babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. So what is Elizabeth doing? Elizabeth is actually prophesying, right? The Holy Spirit comes upon her and she is telling Mary some information that Mary did not tell Elizabeth. Right? Mary did not tell Elizabeth that she had this angelic encounter. Mary did not tell Elizabeth that you know she is going to be with child. She didn't tell anything. But Elizabeth, because of the Holy Spirit coming upon her, she is conveying this message. She is saying, blessed is the fruit of your womb. Mean, you know, that's just a usage. Blessed is your child. Blessed is the child that you are going to bear. And she's saying, why is the mother of my Lord? So she acknowledges that what Mary, you know, whom Mary is going to give birth to is the son of God. Jesus. Right? She's saying, so probably Elizabeth did not even know what she was, you know, the full meaning of what she was conveying. She's saying, what is it? You know, what an awesome privilege. You know, she's saying, blessed are you among women. Blessed are the, is the fruit of your womb. Why is this granted to me? Or, you know, why is this privilege granted to me uh, that the, the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, and then, you know, and look at verse 45. Verse 45, blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. Now, this is again by the Holy Spirit. Okay? You see those words, you know, what do you think Mary would have experienced when she heard these words? Just imagine, what do you think Mary would have experienced? Or what, what do you think Mary felt when, you, when she heard these words? You, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Verse 45, right? And brother, you also. What do you think Mary felt, would have felt? Anyone? Okay, Sanjay says, a confirmation from God, very true, right? It's a, it's a confirmation. It's a confirmation of something that, you know, a personal encounter, a private encounter that she had, an angelic encounter, and now it's a confirmation of that. What did the angel say? You know, if you look at the previous verse, um, angel says, the power of the, uh, you know, uh, highest will overshadow you. And I'm looking at 35, verse 35. Therefore, that Holy One, which, will be, which is to be born, will be called the Son of God. Uh, verse 36, you know, he's actually give, revealing some information about Elizabeth. Now, indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her, who was called barren. Verse 37, for with God, nothing will be impossible. Okay, with God, nothing will be impossible. And then Mary says, let it be to me according to your word. May it happen to me according to your word. So what do you think Mary felt when this angel said this? Or sorry, when Elizabeth prophesied and gave all this information? What do you think? Just put yourself in Mary's place. Anyone? Okay, Shani. Um, I think she felt like a confirmation that she truly heard from God. Mm. Uh, did you say confirmation? Yes, confirmation that she truly um, that she truly yeah. heard from God. Yeah, right. Exactly what Sanjay also shared, and also I would say a deep comfort and assurance, right? Now you look at the nature of the miracle, right? And you, and you consider the kind of society they were in and the nature of the miracle, it is not something which is, you know, which it's, it's something which is disturbing. It's something that people will not understand. In fact, Joseph himself felt that he should not go ahead with the 
marriage. Right? It is something that will bring dishonor. It is something which people will ask questions. And so he didn't want anything to do with that. Right? So if Joseph felt that way, just imagine what Mary would have felt. Right? Mary would have felt like, you know, how will I answer people if they're going to ask? How will I, you know, maybe I should just, you know, so many things going on in her mind. But here is Elizabeth, by the Spirit of the Lord, prophesying. Okay, uh, I see Lucy rejoicing in God. Yeah. So here is Elizabeth bringing this message and saying, this is what it is. There will be a fulfillment of all the things that were told you by the Lord. Okay. So much so, you know, Mary, verse 46, what does Mary do? No, she just breaks out in a song, right? Do we see that? Verse 46 onwards, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. I just want us to want to point out that the Holy Spirit, when he brings his word, when he brings the word, when he brings the prophetic word, it produces, uh, you know, it, it's a word of exhortation. It's a word of edification. It's a word of comfort, right? Um, it could be corrective, it could be predictive, but this is all this we see, you know, there's a lot of exhortation, there's a lot of encouragement, and there's a lot of comfort that comes from God, right? Um, in fact, 1 Corinthians 14 talks about that, it says, he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. Okay, so we'll take a break, 10 minutes, and then we'll come back, we'll continue. Thank you.